the thing that I think is really funny about this, I, I found this, you know, in, in the academic world, I found it in the museum world, is that, you know, people think of these things as, as so different, but that's never been something that really, like, those divisions never totally existed in my mind. I mean, certainly they're different. I'm not that crazy to think that they're all exactly the same. But, you know, I mean, part of the reason I ended up doing Comp Lit as part of my program of study was that I just didn't like sort of dividing up material. And, and that was um, a field that is really ingrained in mixing things up. Um, I really had had these things that I was interested in with the ancient world, but I also really wanted to pull them forward into modern literature. And then, I mean, literature was the core of what I wrote about for like my uh, senior thesis. But also, you know, in in the conflict classes that I took, some of which were in the classics department, some of which were in the English department, and kind of all over the place. You know, you're you're working with film, you're working with theater, you're working with performance, um, and all of it is is just of this, you know, culture that is shaped by history, that is shaped by politics, that is shaped by social movements. And so in in my mind, the the leap from, you know, the humanities literature to working in a museum and being very immersed in art history was something that never seemed odd, that always made a lot of sense to me. Because basically, art history is literary studies with pictures instead of words. You're, you're still working with, you know, uh, uh, an image instead of a text that is rooted somewhere, it's shaped by a society, it's exemplary of what that society values and is concerned with. Um, and, and that's exactly what you're looking at. There are certainly other, you know, concerns where you have, um, you know, the style of brushwork instead of syntax, but all of it's still balancing the thematic with the technical and sort of figuring out what that's telling you about, you know, the world and about humanity, um, if you want to get really deep with it. Um, and so, I, that was never a division that so much existed in my mind. And similarly, going from, you know, working in, in the museum to then going out to watch and write about theater, you know, again, I'm not saying it's the exact same thing. There are definitely differences that are pretty obvious to see. But at the same time, you know, it's still about what creative expression, you know, what role it plays in our world, what what it's saying, what it's doing, how it does it. And the the performing that I do is less linked to it on that lofty level and is more just my personal, you know, antidote to the rest of life. Um, so it's something that, that I have fun doing, but at the same time it's also having processed all of that stuff, a way to then output it in a different form. You're ingesting all of these, you know, cultural expressions and stories, and um, you're, you're sorting through that to sort of make something else. Um, a lot of the, the work that I do, um, when I am improvising or if I'm ever writing a sketch or something like that um, is definitely influenced by these sort of themes, uh, stories, these timeless things that we're always grappling with. I try to, to really dig into that when I have the chance to. So it does all tie together on some level in a way that I, I do find meaningful. Um, it's not like it's always front and center, but there is a sort of a logic to all of it.